Okay, today we're going to talk about process costing. And process costing is used when a company manufactures the same product day in and day out, okay? Unlike certain products, for example, cabinets, which you have to build the customer specifications based on the size of a kitchen, the height of the ceiling, preferences, etc. Gasoline, you make the same stuff day in, day out, paint, cornflakes, uh, nuts and bolts and washers and chemicals. And so the means by which we determine the cost of our product, how much is in work and process ending inventory, how much gets transferred to finished goods, not to mention unit cost in terms of evaluating efficiency. Are we manufacturing this product as efficiently as we did last month, last year? We use a different method called process costing. Here's an example of some companies uh, that use process costing. They make the same product day in, day out, okay? Uh, Alcoa aluminum makes aluminum. Now, it makes it in different sizes and shapes, but it makes the same basic product. It makes these great big ingots or whatever they call them, and then companies cut them to size and press them and roll them and do all that stuff. Pepsi makes that syrup that they put in cans or, or bags. They send them off to McDonald's and Burger King and who knows where else, and they add carbonation and boom. The gasoline you buy from Arco is the same, whether it's in Santa Monica, Long Beach, Glendora, whatever. So these companies use what's called process costing. Job order is when the product differs from project to project. Think of a movie, okay? Uh, golf courses, they're all different, okay? Homes, obviously. Uh, advertising, campaigns, wedding invitations, Anything where the customer says, I want it this way, this size, this shape, this look, et cetera, we're going to use a job order system. Okay, now, one of the unique things about process costing is that you can have more than one work in process department. In job order costing, we take raw materials, we requisition them into production. This is where we add labor and manufacturing overhead. And then when it's finished, the job's finished, we transfer it to finished goods inventory, and then when we sell it, to cost of goods sold. The only difference here is that you can have multiple work in process departments because they're doing different functions. Okay, so here they're making ice cream. They're the raw materials. They mix it. Okay, there's labor, uh, the machines, and the energy to turn the machine is your overhead. Then it goes to packaging and then to finish goods. So here they have two work in process departments. You could have three, four, five work in process departments. So that's what's unique about process costing as compared to job order costing is the multiple work and process departments. And that's the only, uh, from an accounting standpoint, the only journal entry that will be any different. And we'll look at that towards the end of this lecture. Okay, one of the key concepts in process costing is this concept of equivalent units. We call them equivalent whole units, equivalent complete units, same thing. So if I just say equivalent units, you know I'm referring to equivalent whole or complete units. So let's take a look at this slide. When materials flow through the production process at a pace that's different from labor and overhead, then work in process at the end of the period will have a different percentage of materials, labor, and overhead. Okay, so we might have work in process that has 80% of its materials that it needs for the completed product, but at this point in the production process there's a lot more labor and overhead, say 60% of labor and 40 or 50% of overhead that still needs to be added to complete the product. And that makes costing the product difficult when you have different percentages of completion. Okay, for example, if I'm making a, a great big batch of pancake mix, then what I would do is I'd dump all the pancake batter, the powdered stuff, into the bowl at once. So I have 100% of my raw materials. And now I have someone stirring the pot and it's in a pot, which is your equipment, which has to get depreciated. And you have the flame underneath where I'm adding water, and that's your overhead, the utilities. And then we're going to stir the pot and heat the pot, and that's going to be our labor and overhead. And we incur that cost evenly throughout the period. So at the end of a period, in fact, let me go to the next slide here, we're going to see that it's going to be difficult to cost out this product. I'm going to return to this example in a moment. Just want to review. Equivalent units are used to determine the cost of goods transferred from WIP, work in process to finish goods, or from WIP department A to WIP department B. We also use it to determine what's in our work in process inventory at the end of the period, since that's going to go on the balance sheet. Remember, we have three inventories, raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. We're going to determine the cost per unit produced, 
and we can use this data to evaluate efficiency. Are we manufacturing efficiently from this period to last period? Are our material costs increasing? Are our labor costs increasing? It helps us to identify areas in which our costs are increasing so we can understand it better and perhaps take corrective action. Or if we can't fix it, maybe we have to raise the price. Okay, so let's take a look at this example here. At the end of a period, there may be 500 partially completed units of a product that is 70% complete in terms of materials and 45% complete in terms of labor and overhead. Now let's think back for a moment. In a previous chapter, we said that labor and overhead combined were what was called conversion costs. These were converting raw materials into a finished product. How do you convert steel and glass and upholstery and rubber into a finished process, a finished product? You take skilled labor and you take lots of machines and, and you, put, you drive it with energy and that's your overhead cost and you, and you come up with a finished product. So 70% complete from a material standpoint, 45% complete from a conversion standpoint, labor plus overhead together. Makes it difficult to determine the value of ending work and process as well as, well, what is the cost of this in terms of a unit cost and what are we going to put on the balance sheet? Okay, another example. 100 bottles half filled could be consolidated to make 50 complete or 100% full bottles. Pretty straightforward concept. Let's look at the second example. Now I have a doghouse that's comprised of five pieces of wood. They're all the same, piece of, well, same size piece of wood and there's no back or front. You can pass through it. It's simply basic shelter from sun or rain. Okay? Now, each piece, if there's five pieces, each piece represents 20% of the doghouse. So if there's two pieces, I've connected these two pieces, and that means they're 40% complete. So I have five doghouses, 40% complete. If I were to break those pieces apart individually, I could construct two doghouses because, look, I've got 10 pieces of wood. I need five pieces to make one house, so 10 pieces. I could have made two complete dog houses. Instead, I have five houses that are 40% complete. Okay? Five products, 40% complete, are the equivalent to two 100% complete products. Five times 0.4 gives you two. That's how we calculate it. All right. If a batch of cookie batter, or we can go back to our pancake uh, example, requires 10 pounds of mix to be poured into a bowl at the beginning of the process, and it requires five hours of heating and continuous stirring by a person, then if the batch was started at 3 p.m. on December 31st, and the workday ends at 5 p.m., then think about what we have. We would have 100% of the materials because we dumped everything into the bag all at once, but it would have 40% of labor and 40% of overhead. Now, in our example, we're going to make the following assumptions, and this is important, that the materials are all added in the beginning of the period. And just think we're pouring the mix in at the beginning of the period. For many companies, that's not the case. Okay, you could have 60% materials, 30% labor, or 80% labor. You can have varying percentages, but we're going to make two assumptions. First, materials enter the production process at the beginning of the period. We dump them in the bowl. And labor and overhead, or conversion, is incurred evenly throughout the period. We're going to make those assumptions. So if a batch takes five hours and we've worked for two hours, two divided by five, we've completed 40% of the labor, 40% of the overhead. Okay? So the completions are different for materials than they are for conversion. And that makes it difficult determining unit cost that's sitting in ending inventory as well as the value of ending inventory. And so this is where we use this equivalent whole unit concept. Okay? All right. Now, there are two different methods we can use. And I'm going to go over both methods. Very important. You will know which method you need to use for your class. It'll either be the weighted average method or the FIFO method. That will be communicated to you. You only need to know that one method. I'm going to go through both methods but you only need to know the method that you're being held accountable for, weighted average or FIFO, not both. Okay, so we use these methods to determine ending work and process inventory and the value of goods that are being transferred out of our department 
either into the next work in process department or if we're the last work in process department, the cost being transferred to finished goods. Since we have to know what the complete cost of the product is when it goes from whip A to B to C and then to finished goods. Okay? Notice, both methods will produce similar results when applied in a consistent fashion. So not exact, but pretty darn close. Okay? And again, I will let you know which method you need to know. Okay, here's our example. Let's, let's follow this closely. All right, we'll read through it. We have in beginning inventory, we have 6,200 units that are 60% complete from a conversion standpoint, and they're 100% complete from a material standpoint because we already dumped everything into the bowl, the mold, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so 6,200 units, and if it helps from a visual standpoint, think of like a car that's partially manufactured. Okay, it has all the materials, but it's 60% complete from a labor and overhead standpoint. Now, in addition to that, we started from scratch 57,500 units this period. Okay, and if you think about a production line, the 6,200 units here are going to get finished first, first in, first out, right? And then we started an additional 57,500 units. At the end of this period, let's just say the year, we had on the assembly line, work in process, 5,000 units that were 45% complete from a conversion standpoint. Okay? So the, we need these numbers here. We're doing FIFO right now. First we're going to look at FIFO, then we'll look at weighted average. Now, the beginning units, the 6,200 units, there was $18,600 in materials, 9,000 in conversion for a total of 27,600 uh, costs that were sitting in beginning work and process. This period, we had to finish those units, plus we started an additional 57,500 units. This period, we added 173,000 in materials and 83,500 in conversion, labor and overhead, okay? So we had 27,600 in beginning uh, work and process, we added another 256,000 in total for a total of $284,100. Okay, and this is the total cost, total costs to be accounted for. Okay, these are all the costs we're dealing with. And now, this 284 is going to end up in one of two places. Most of these costs will be transferred out to the next department, and some of them will still be sitting in ending work in process inventory. Okay, that's the only two places they could be. They're either transferred out or we're going to complete them next period. Okay, so we have to do what's called a cost reconciliation. And that is, we have to say, okay, of this 284,100, which is comprised of 27,6 and 256,5, where did they go? How much was transferred out? How much is still sitting in ending work and process? Okay, again, we're looking first at FIFO. Okay, first, we have to determine how many units were started and completed. Okay? Now let's go back. We had 6,200 units in beginning work and process. They were started last period. I'm going to go back to the previous slide. This period, we started 57.5, but at the end of this period, we had 5,000 units that were not yet finished. Therefore, we began with 6,200 units. Those have to be completed first. We started an additional 57,500 units. So there was a total of 63,700 units in work in process, beginning WIP plus units started. Now, if we had a total of 63,700 units that went through work in process and our ending inventory was 5,000, ending WIP by definition is not yet finished, 
then we must have completed 58,700. These were finished. But what we're looking for is this bottom line here, units that were both started and completed this period. We know that we started 57.5, okay? We completed a total of 58.7, okay? So we could do the long route, which shows you everything, or we can simply say started 57.5. If we had ending inventory of 5,000, then 57.5 minus ending whip of five, we started and completed 52,500 units this period. Went from zero to 100% complete. Okay, and we're going to see the next slide. We're going to see why we need this number for FIFO. Okay, the next thing we have to do is we have to determine equivalent units, and we separate materials from conversion. We need these three numbers, beginning work and process, started and completed. That was the previous slide. Go back and look at that. And then ending work and process. And notice... I will give you percentage of completion for both beginning and ending work and process. I have to give you those numbers. Let's take a look at the data, and then I'm going to explain what these numbers mean. Okay, now, the assumption we made is that all materials were added at the beginning of the period. Therefore, I have 6,200 units in work and process that have all the materials, but they're 60% complete from a conversion standpoint. Therefore, this period, this month, I have to finish those units. Notice material says zero. That's because we've already added everything last period. All we got to do is keep stirring for a few more hours. So 6,200 units that are 60% complete, I got to do the remaining 40% this period. 6,200 units times 0.4 gives you 2,480 units equivalent whole units that we added this period. The amount of time and energy that it took to complete those 6,200 units, we could have started and completed 2,480 units. Okay? Hit pause if you need to think about that, because once you get the concept, this whole <clears throat> chapter will make more sense. The amount of time, labor and conversion, that we spent finishing these 6,200 units, the remaining 40%, we could have started and completed 2,480 units. All the materials were added last period. That's why material says zero. I didn't have to add any more materials this period. Now, started and completed. We figured that out in a previous slide. Think about it. If we started and completed them this month or this year, they have 100% of materials, 100% of labor, 100% of uh, overhead. They're, they have 100% of everything they need. So, 52,500 units have 52,500 units from a material standpoint and 52,500 units from a labor and overhead standpoint. They're, they were started and completed this period. They have everything they need, and it all happened this month, this year. Now, ending inventory, which is at December 31st, which is incomplete, we added all the material this period. These were the units that we started towards the end of the year. So we dumped in all the material. So notice, we added all 5,000 units of material. But since they're only 45% complete from a conversion standpoint, we have 2,250 equivalent units from a conversion standpoint. So to do 45% of the work on 5,000 units, I could have started and completed 2250 units from a conversion standpoint. Because again, we add all the materials at the beginning of the period, but we add labor and overhead uniformly or evenly throughout the period. This is why we have to do this, because we add costs unevenly in the production process. And again, in reality, you might have three different percentages for materials, for labor, and overhead. Here we're trying to simplify things a little bit by assuming materials all get dumped in at the beginning, and we incur labor and overhead evenly. Add up those three numbers, and that gives us equivalent whole units produced this period. Zero plus 52.5 plus 5,000 is 57.5. And look at conversion. It's a different number. Why? Because of that percentage business. 
2480 of conversion plus 525 started and completed plus 2250 of ending inventory are equivalent units are 57,230 which is a little bit different than our equivalent units for materials. And this will commonly happen where you'll have two different numbers. If they're always the same number, we wouldn't have to go through this process. Okay, we need this in order to determine cost per unit transferred out, as well as for determining what's an ending work in process inventory. Okay? Now, now that we have equivalent units, we can calculate the cost per equivalent whole unit for materials as well as for conversion. And they're two separate numbers. Very important. For FIFO, first in, first out, we use the cost that we added this period. And to go back to a previous slide, if you want to refresh your memory, we added $173,000 worth of materials. Notice we are excluding the cost of, that was incurred last period, beginning with. We're only using costs added this period. 173 divided by the number of units we, equivalent units that we started and completed this period. 57.5, okay, so cost divided by equivalent units, materials, this period costs us $3 per equivalent unit. Uh, conversion, we added 83,500 this period. Divided by the equivalent units for conversion of 57.230 comes to $1 and about 46 cents. Now, let's read the note here. Both Unit costs, $3 and $1.46, are rounded numbers. And this is going to result in a rounding difference when we reconcile this final number up here. When we figure out what's here and here, it's not going to equal 284,100 only because of rounding. It's going to be slightly off, and it's important for you to be able to recognize a rounding difference. Okay? But because we're rounding these, the real number might be 3008,1642, whatever, and that'll give you a more precise number. We're simply rounding. We went out three decimal points in this case. OK, so now that we have our cost per equivalent unit, since we know that materials were added at a different rate than conversion, so we had to come up with two different numbers, we can now come up with our cost analysis. This shows where all the costs, 284,100, went. They either transferred out or they went to ending work in process. OK. So here we go. We've seen these numbers before. Costs that we started with, we still have to account for them because they're still sitting in the product itself. Think of a car that started out 20% complete and now is 80% complete. It has these costs that you began with, and we added costs. So this includes everything. Costs that were in beginning work and process 27.6. Now, look at this next line. Costs to complete beginning work in process. BI is beginning inventory. I should have put beginning work in process inventory. So notice, we didn't have to add any additional materials because we dumped them in all at once, but we had to incur the remaining 40% of labor and overhead. So the 6,200 units in beginning WIP, we have to do the remaining 40%, which is the same as the equivalent of 2,480 units that we start and complete this period, and our uh, conversion cost per equivalent unit we figured out was $1.46 rounded. That gives us 3,618. So we had to finish beginning work in process first. Just think of an assembly line. Had to finish these units, these cars, before we could start any more new units. Now, here's the cost of units that were started and completed this period from scratch, from 0 to 100%, we simply take 52,500 units started and completed, again on a previous slide, multiply it times 3 for materials, get 157.5, multiply 52.5 started and completed times a buck 46 for conversion. Now if you wanted to, since these were all started and completed this period, you could simply add 3 plus 146 and you could have said, 52,500 units started and completed times 446, and that would give you the same number. Okay? So, all the costs that we inherited from last period sitting in beginning WIP, plus the cost we had to incur to finish those beginning work and process units, plus the cost of all the units we both started and completed this period, equals cost of goods completed and transferred out. That's this number here. 
265, 316, and again, there'll be a rounding difference. And if we're WIP department A, and now we're transferring it to WIP department B, we would debit WIP B inventory, credit our department WIP A. If we were the last work in process department before finished goods, we would debit finished goods, credit WIP C, whatever our department was, okay? Now, ending inventory. Remember, we assembly line. We sold some units at the end of the day, December 31st, that are not yet finished. We have to put this on the balance sheet as beginning inventory. Oh, excuse me, ending inventory. Okay. Now, materials. Remember, we had 5,000 units that were 45% complete in ending WIP. We dumped all the material into the bowl this period for those 5,000 units. So notice, from a material standpoint, 5,000 units in ending work and process. They have everything. So 5,000 times three, $15,000. Conversion costs are 45% complete. So 5,000 units, 5,000 cars that on average are 45% complete, okay, is the equivalent to 2,250 equivalent whole or completed units. At a conversion cost per equivalent unit of a buck 46 gives us 3,283. Okay, ending work in process, materials plus conversion, which is materials plus labor plus overhead, 18,283. So if you were to add up 265, 316 plus 18,283, we would have accounted for these costs. Now again, we'll be off by a couple of hundred bucks because of rounding. Okay? But you can tell when you have a rounding difference because say we're off by, for example, $400. If you take 400 and you divide it by 284,000, you're going to see this is a very small number. And that tells you this is a rounding difference. Okay? So that's what we do. First, we calculate the number of units that were started and completed. Okay? Then we figure out equivalent units. Then we figure out cost per equivalent unit. And then we assign costs to the goods that were transferred out and that the goods that are still in ending work and process inventory. And we do what's called a cost reconciliation report, which I'll show you at the very end of this presentation. Okay? That is first in, first out. Okay? Now we're going to look at the weighted average method. Okay? The weighted average method is actually easier than FIFO. Let's take a look. And this is the same data that we began with. 6,200 units in beginning inventory for work in process that are 60% complete from a conversion standpoint. Okay. Note the completion, percentage completion for beginning WIP is going to be ignored in the weighted average method. We started 57,500 units this period. And we have 5,000 units in ending work in process that are 45% complete from a conversion standpoint. Okay, now we assume that for materials, in this example, and I'll tell you on an exam the assumptions, we'll assume all the materials were added in at the beginning of the process. Just think of pouring pancake mix into the bowl. It has all the materials, then you put the water in, and then you incur conversion costs, which is your labor, direct labor, and overhead costs evenly throughout the period. Think of a big bowl, that's your equipment, that's your factory, the flame, that's your utilities, and a direct labor person stirring the mix, okay? You incur those costs evenly throughout the period. Now, beginning work and process, 6,200 units that are 60% complete from a conversion standpoint and at that have 100% of their materials. Last period, we added 18,600 of materials, 9,000 of labor over and overhead for a total of 27,600. This period, we added 173,000 more of materials and we incurred an additional 83,500 of labor. This period, we added $256,500 of additional costs. So our total costs that we have to account for are 27,600 plus 256.5 equals 284,100. We have to figure out where did these costs go? They went one of two different places. Most of it 
was finished, we completed the production, and transferred out either into the next work in process department or the next finished goods, or to, or to finished goods inventory. And then some of it is still sitting incomplete in work in process at the end of this period. That'll be ending work in process inventory, which we know goes on the balance sheet. So we need to know these two numbers. Okay? So what do we do with this 284,100, which again is your total beginning WIP costs, materials, labor, and overhead, plus total costs added this period of 256.5. Okay, using the weighted average method, we ignore the units in beginning inventory, and this is easier than the FIFO method. So, we completed 58,700 units. Obviously, if we completed them, as far as our de department is concerned, they've got 100% of everything they're going to need before we push them out the door to either the next work in process department or to finish goods. And in our department, we have 5,000 units that are still in ending inventory that are 45% complete from a conversion standpoint. You need that number. So remember, you can ignore beginning inventory, the units, and the percentage completion. For weighted average, you don't need those, but you do need the units and the percentage of completion in ending work in process. Now we have to calculate what we call equivalent whole units or equivalent completed units. If we completed 58,700 units, then they have to, by definition, have 100% of materials and 100% of conversion, labor and overhead. Okay, so they got 100% of everything they're going to need for materials and conversion. Ending work in process is going to have 100% of the material since we dumped them all in at the beginning of the period, but it has 45% of labor and overhead conversion costs, which is the equivalent to had we, instead of making 5,000 units 45% complete, if we had started and completed units, we would have been able to finish 2250 units, 5,000 times 0.45, equivalent completed units 2250. So notice EWU, equivalent whole units or equivalent completed units or simply equivalent units, is for materials 63,700 and for conversion 60,950. They're different. And that happens in process costing. That's why we have to do this because we incur material costs at a different pace than we incur labor and overhead costs. And that makes costing difficult when, you do, when that happens. Okay. Now... What we do is, and the reason we call this weighted average, is we take all the costs from beginning WIP plus all the costs we added this period, and we divide them by the equivalent units. Now remember, the units that were completed here, the 58.7, that includes the beginning WIP, which we had to finish first. Think, think in terms of an assembly line. We finished those units first, and then we started and completed a bunch of units, and then we started units at the end of this month that were not yet finished. Okay, just think of an assembly line. So, total cost, and you have to go back to the previous slide. We had, I want to say, 18,600 in beginning WIP materials, plus we added another 173 this period, total of 196 for materials. Conversion costs in beginning WIP was $9,000 of labor and overhead, and we added an additional 83,500. Again, it's in a previous slide, for a total of 92,500. So our cost per equivalent unit for materials, we take total cost of beginning WIP plus what was added this period, divide it by my equivalent whole units, what we calculated previously. That gives us $3.01. Conversion costs, beginning WIP plus what was added this period, 92.5, divided by my equ equivalent units for conversion of 60,950, gives me a conversion cost of a buck 52 per unit. And if you wanted to compare this to the FIFO method, you would see that the numbers are reasonably close, not exact. Okay, but if the process remains the same, you're going to get fairly consistent results with either method. Okay, okay now that we have cost per equivalent unit, we can do our cost analysis. And again, we're trying to figure out, this is all my cost, beginning with plus everything that was added, materials, labor, and overhead. Most of it was transferred to the next department, whether that's WIP or finished goods. 
And some of it's still sitting in our department as ending work and process inventory. So what was completed and transferred out? 58,700 units at a materials cost per equivalent unit of $3.01 gives us 176.687. From a conversion standpoint, same 58,700 units that were finished, times a buck 52 gives us 89.224. Add those two together, and we get 265,911. Now, if we're sending it to the next work in process department, think inventory, asset, right, normal debit balance, then to transfer it into the next work in process department, I'm going to debit WIP department B, and our department A, I'm going to credit WIP department A. These are both inventory accounts for work in process. We're sending it out of ours, an inventory, which is an asset, always gets credited when you reduce it, and adding it to WIP B with a debit. If we were the last work in process department on the assembly line, then instead I would debit finished goods inventory and I would credit WIP C or D or whatever our department was. Okay? All right, and then what's remaining in ending WIP? We know we have 5,000 units that have all the materials in them, and, they have, and the 5,000 units are 45% complete from a conversion standpoint. And so in a previous slide, we figured out that materials have everything. So there's 5,000 units, 100% of materials, times 301 gives us $15,050 in work and process ending inventory for materials. And conversion, remember 5,000 units times 0.45, the percentage completion, that's 2,250 uh, equivalent whole units from a conversion standpoint, times $1.52 gives us 3,240. Add those two numbers together, 15,050 plus 3,420 equals 18,470. That's what goes on the balance sheet ending WIP for our department. Add those two numbers up, 265,911 plus 18,470 gives you 284,381, which is this number here, and they're different because of rounding. Again, we're off by $281. If you divide that by 284,100, you'll see it's a very small very small number. That's a rounding difference. Okay? And there you have it. So, calculate equivalent units. Calculate cost per equivalent unit for materials as well as for conversion. And then, based on that, we determine how much was transferred out to the next department and how much is still sitting in ending WIP. The only journal entry in a process costing environment that is unique and different is transferring from WIP A to B or WIP B to C, since you have multiple work and process departments. You don't have that for a job order system. You only have one work and process department. Here's that journal entry. To go from A to B, you debit WIP B, credit WIP A. The last WIP department to transfer out goes finished goods, credit WIP. Okay. Now, I'm not going to ask you to produce this thing in its entirety, but here is the cost of production report, and this has all the steps. You look at the physical units. You have to calculate equivalent units, and again, you do it separately for materials and overhead. Then, based on all of our costs for materials and all of our costs for conversion, we calculate the equivalent whole units for materials and for conversion. Once we have those numbers, we multiply those costs per unit times the number of units that we finished, this number here. And last, we calculate the number of units that are partially completed, still in ending work and process, to determine what our ending WIP value is that goes on the balance sheet. Okay? This is an area where you're going to need to practice. So do your practice homework, check your answers, and that does it for process costing.